So Method of Action, as it states on its website, is a collection of tools, games, and articles to help you learn and design. And I think it is an amazing tool for students, especially those trying to expand their photo editing skills. They've got a collection of games, such as a color matching game, a shape type, and a kern type. They've got tools such as Method Draw, and they've got some articles put together that change. They share different ones, post updates and stuff, as well as a block. My favorite game is the Bazir game. I'll take you to it. Now, one of my favorite things about this game is that it takes such a difficult tool like the pen tool on Photoshop and really allows the user a greater understanding and sort of a step-by-step -step process of having practice with this difficult tool. Uh, it's just, it's very beneficial for the user because you don't have to have necessarily Photoshop open. You don't have to be at school in order to be able to practice this, especially if you don't already own Photoshop. And you can just get started. It takes you through a couple tutorials at the beginning. You can replay those if you'd like. You can also skip the tutorial stages if you're just coming to brush up your skills, perhaps. I actually found out about this game when I missed the Photoshop class that covered the pen tool, which was very unfortunate for me. My son was sick and I was unable to make it to class. So kind of felt that I had fallen behind a little bit, reached out to a classmate to see if they would share their notes, and they suggested that I just actually come on here and practice, which was a wonderful suggestion. I come on here all the time, especially if I haven't been working in Photoshop for a little while. I find that it benefits me to just sort of have some practice. Let's see. Hopefully you noticed there my line wasn't complete because I hadn't actually stayed in the lines that they've provided. Kind of like when you're little and you were told you needed to stay within the lines while you're coloring. Well, that same rule applies here. If you're not within the lines, the game simply won't let you proceed to draw. For more complicated ones here at the end, you can replay the tutorial a couple times. Now this is actually the last tutorial. After this, it goes on to in just provide you with a shape that you need to be able to copy or trace through. And this really not only helps you hone your skills because you're getting hands-on practice, but it goes ahead and shows you the skill that or excuse me, rather, the usefulness that the pen tool has. I mean, I just went from making, you know, an angle to making a hexagon, to making a circle, to making a heart, and now I'm going to make a car. So overall, it's just really a strong tool. And I like that it has so many things that are the same as on Photoshop, for instance, the same way that you do the pin tool in Photoshop is exactly how you do it here. It does continue with the control Z to go backwards if you need to redo anything, also like in Photoshop. And so it just feels very natural to the user because hopefully this is something they've already worked with and that can just be such a wonderful benefit. I'm just going to keep going through some of these to show you how they work. And now you can see the range of shapes that they provide you with. It will let you know how many nodes you used out of how many were available. So in this instance, I used 14 out of the available 15. You can proceed to the next stage. You could try it again if you thought you could do better. I'll just keep going. And you can go whichever way you'd like. Say, I don't like how this is going. Say, I run out of nodes. Like, you're going to try.
try to do it on purpose real quick. So let's just say I wasn't paying attention or I don't know, my toddler came up and hit some keys while I wasn't looking. I could just go up to the top and clear the whole stage. Start over. I could be going left or right from the dot. I don't necessarily have to go the way that I am, but it does work this way as well. One of the only things that I dislike is that for new beginners, it doesn't keep those that shift and alt key over in the corner for you, which might be beneficial if you're a new user and you're having a hard time remembering which key does what. As well as, let's say you're coming over here for practice or to get an idea of how to complete a shape yourself, you can't skip through these stages here at the back. You can skip the tutorial, but for the stages, you're just going to go through the exact same stage every single time. Obviously, they get diff more and more difficult as they go on. In fact, I'm not sure if it ever ends. I haven't reached an end yet. That doesn't mean there's not one. I just haven't found it. However, as a user, it can be frustrating knowing that, hey, maybe I have this idea of something I'd like to complete, and I can't really because... I just have to go through all of these small stages before I can get that far. So if you ever do something like I just did, you hit the wrong button on your computer maybe, you can just clear your stage and start over. And see again, I didn't stay in the lines, so I have to redo that note. One of the wonderful things is that, like I was saying, it gets harder and harder as it goes. And when we were in the tutorial stages, there were in fact little gray lines for you to follow after it had gone through its tutorial. And as you will see, those are gone now. And so this really has become just a playing field, basically, a practice zone for the user. And so I'll just keep going through some more of these to let you see how far I can go or um, what the different stages are like as you continue to see their increasing difficulty. But this is the Brazier game by Method of Action, and it is one of my favorite tools.